Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to present at the AWS Summit. In today's session, Jess and I will cover an overview of the cyber threat landscape, what is cyber threat intel and why it matters, the Australian Government Cyber Security Centre's cyber threat intelligence sharing capability, and how you can receive, share, and action this intel on AWS. The ACSC is responsible for protecting and defending Australia from cyber attacks and building our nation's cyber resilience. CSC's Actor Agnostic Threat Program, which is achieved through technical experts who rip apart adversaries' tools, find bad in our most critical networks, and emulate adversaries to detect and minimize harm. These teams are Australia's malware reverse engineering, hunt, red team, out of discovery and detection teams. My team's days are spent finding and tracking hackers. Our work then feeds the ACSC's job of designing the treatments, response, and disruption measures to protect against these adversaries. But most importantly, we are providing our most critical network defenders and owners, like some of you in this room, the best advice to prevent and defend against the evolving cyber threat environment. Malicious cyber activity poses a significant risk to Australia's national security, prosperity, and our international stability. No person, organisation, or entity in Australia is immune from a cyber attack. But the reoccurring theme as I talk today will be about partnership, or even better, teamwork. Through closer teamwork in your organisation, across industry, businesses, and government, we can collectively address cyber threats and make Australia a harder target. The ACSC's cyber threat intelligence sharing capability is one of the key ways we can achieve that. By sharing cyber threat intelligence as we see it, ensuring we're sharing it across the Australian economy at speed and scale to quickly respond and mitigate any costly compromises. So what does the current cyber threat environment look like? We are currently witnessing deteriorating strategic circumstances in our region and globally, and expanding cyber capabilities are of particular concern. These geopolitical pivots are making the cyber threat environment unpredictable and shifting into more disruptive activity. So beyond just espionage into our key networks and into disruption, disruption of our essential services that we need. The activity against Australian networks, government and public is real. At the ACSC, we are notified of one cyber incident in Australia every seven minutes. Last year, we saw an increase in the number and sophistication of cyber threats, making crimes like extortion, espionage and fraud easier to replicate at scale no sector of the Australian economy was left untouched. We received over 76,000 cyber crime reports, which was an increase of nearly 13% from the previous financial year. So who are the bad guys? Nation states. Not a day goes by that we don't see them probing or trying to breach our defences. They undertake intelligence gathering activities, reconnaissance and pre-positioning malicious software, most likely with a view to activate it at, at the time of their choosing to deny, degrade or disrupt critical services to Australians. Capabilities of nation states continue to increase with their ability to exploit vulner public vulnerabilities within minutes. Cyber criminals are also preying on Australians, trying to steal your money and sensitive data. Cyber criminals are prolific in the use of ransomware and business email compromise. We are seeing cyber crime as a service and the affiliate model increasingly used by syndicates, which effectively lowers the barrier to entry. These services make cyber crime opportunities, including ransomware, more accessible to criminals without the technical skills to develop their own malware. Ransomware remains the most destructive cybercrime threat. It requires minimal technical expertise, is low cost, and can have a significant impact on organisations, 
potentially crippling core business functions and disruption to essential services. Cyber criminals increasingly focus on organisations across all sectors which have the resources to pay large ransoms, who need to preserve their continuity of services, and who want to minimise that reputational damage caused by the disruption. So what can we do about it? Prevention. Preventative action will be less costly in time, money, and disruption of your services than having to respond to a large cybersecurity incident. We need to raise the bar and make the barrier to penetrate our networks harder. This is definitely a multi-pronged approach, and one of those is cyber threat intel sharing. So what is cyber threat intelligence, and why should you care? It's not just individual observables and indicators of compromise. It is cyber threat intelligence that has been collected and evaluated. It is evidence-based data to inform your cyber defense. It often includes information on actor attribution, tactics, techniques, procedures, motives, or targets. It often is, informs what we call our cyber situational awareness, and it's essential for our informed risk management. The ever-increasing flood of vulnerabilities and evolving attack techniques means that no single organization has the resources to achieve this on their own. As I said earlier, cybersecurity is definitely a team sport. Proactive cyber threat intelligence sharing builds resilience across organizations, making your networks and systems harder targets. One of the key benefits is it allows you to stay ahead of pro potential threats. By sharing information about known vulnerabilities and attacks, you can take proactive measures to protect yourself or your organization's systems. This can help prevent costly downtime and damage to your company's reputation. Another important aspect is the ability to respond quickly to emerging threats. By sharing information about ongoing attacks, you can deploy countermeasures in a matter of minutes. And this can help minimize the impact of an attack and prevent further damage. Threat intel sharing also relies on trust, trusted communities. And that's the strength of CETUS. It's that community, a network of partners across public and private sectors. By sharing trusted cyber threat intelligence, we can build a shared threat context. We have seen trust communities are usually formed around sectors. For example, the financial services sector has established their own trust community for threat sharing, also known as information sharing and analysis centers or ISACs. Organizations within this sector have similar assets and therefore similar vulnerabilities, whether people, process, technologies, or supply chain vulnerabilities that could be exploited by an attacker. By forming this trust community, they can share cyber threat intel within that specific sector context that helps them understand things like relevance and priority. The difference with a platform like CETUS is it moves from talking about threats to actually sharing the information that action can be taken on. It's data that is directly actioned to have a defensive impact in near real time. Rather than attempting to establish sharing agreements in the middle of an active cyber incident, organizations can plan ahead and have agreements in place prior. Planning ahead ensures that roles, responsibilities, and information handling requirements are pre-agreed, because when threats are emerging at speed, that sharing at speed matters, and ad hoc informal processes are slow when it matters most. It also ensures that organizations within a trust community can build up a proactive threat picture together for resilience. Standardized data formats and transport protocols provide the building blocks for interoperability, ensuring that sensitive or classified information is safeguarded. The CETAS program is a key initiative in the Australian cyber security strategy. To create a platform where government and industry partners across Australia can share information about malicious cyber activity at machine speed, so we can be best positioned to identify and respond to cyber threats. The aim is to improve 
the resilience of the Australian digital economy. This is a capability that you can connect to and benefit from. CDIS was co-designed with industry following extensive workshops and requirements gathering to ensure a platform was developed that met real needs. It is built on standard industry formats in both NISP and STIX to support what organisations use. At the core, CETA's partners share threats or observables they are seeing. It is enriched and validated by the ACSC with an additional intelligence that we have and then shared back to the CETA's community. This creates a cycle where we are gaining observables from Australian networks, improving everyone's knowledge of a threat and sharing it back out to organisations who can take action based on their networks. Through this, we have achieved enhanced situational awareness of the cyber threat environment and enable partners to protect their infrastructure from no malicious activity in near real time. At the strategic level, it enables the ACSC to scale the disruption, deterrence and mitigation for Australians. The current CETUS is relatively young, which is now enabled by directional sharing. This has been achieved and is the start of what we, where the direction we're going. We are still evolving to mature the capability with our current development focused on streamlining and expediting customer onboarding, improving the quality of the CTI for high confidence Intel sharing, and for partners the ability to raise Intel collaborations based on sightings to drive more trends and identification of potential campaigns. So now let's step through an example of how this works. An ACSC analyst receives intelligence through CETUS or through their broader analytical effort discovers malicious infrastructure. In one example, an analyst identified the URL which was aiming to mimic Australian government infrastructure, MyGov, where Australians critically depend on for their social services. After conducting analysis, it was identified that the infrastructure was hosted outside of Australia. On confirming it was malicious, ACSC fed the indicator of compromise to CETA's partners so they could protect their infrastructure. This was so their own customers or employees would not mistakenly go to the false site and enter their credit card details, which could ultimately be used for cyber criminal purposes. ACSC also took broader efforts to protect Australians. We issued a takedown, a domain takedown request to the infrastructure hosting provider to take the malicious infrastructure down, preventing more Australians falling prey to this scam. The IOCs were also fed into the ACSC's protected domain name service to protect over 400 organisations. In a second example, a CETA's partner reported that they had over 60 IP addresses that were talking to a web shell. The analysis identified the web shell to be China Chopper, which is a web shell hosted on web servers to provide access back into an enterprise network without needing to rely on the infected system and calls back to a remote command and control server. This has been used by several threat actor groups. This information was then shared all onto to the CEDAS platform for all CEDAS partners to be aware so they could check and be vigilant to this current campaign. So the benefits of cyber threat intel sharing are overwhelming. Threats are moving quick and no one can do this alone. Together, we make ourselves a harder target. We build a trusted peer-to-peer -peer network of experts that can anticipate, mitigate, and respond to cyber threats. So before I finish, I wanted to talk on your partnership with the ACSC. Please report, we are here to help. We can inform you on how best to contain, reduce harm, and inform your remediation efforts. But most importantly, reporting all these incidents to the ACSC helps build the national cyber threat picture and may allow us to warn others. We need to know what is happening in Australian cyber environment so we are positioned to defend and protect our national interests. We are here to help. We also run our national information exchange twice yearly 
and take place concurrently across all our joint cybersecurity offices, which are located in most capital cities, where we bring together our ACSC partners to discuss the cyber threat environment and then engage more at the local level on issues that you are seeing within your sector and how you can tackle them together. You can join the ACSC Partnership Program via our website on cyber.gov.au and clicking through the links, becoming an ACSC Partner, you can also join a CETUS Program. So to conclude, the cyber threat environment is shifting, shaped by the geopolitical environment, including vulnerabilities that we cannot predict. Cyber is a partnership and takes a team approach, which is critical to combating emerging and fast evolving cyber threats. Cyber requires constant review, continual assessment, informed by shifts in threat and technology. Our adversaries aren't sitting around today because we made it hard. I encourage you to join Australia's Cyber Threat Intel sharing capability. And by sharing cyber threat intel that is directly impacting out networks and providing that to other Australian network owners, we can jointly combat threats, but also build a community of trust that can be leveraged at speed. I'll now hand over to Jess, who will take you through how you can receive, share and action intel on AWS. Thanks, Jackie. All right. So with that in mind, I'm going to talk you through how to get started with cyber threat intelligence sharing on AWS. So the first thing that you need to do, and I'll cover this first at a high level, and then I'll dig a little bit deeper to talk about some of the technical elements of this. Step one, deploy a cyber threat intelligence platform on AWS. There are a range of cyber threat intelligence platforms out there. Most of them are open source, and you can also check out AWS Marketplace. Two that come to mind are OpenCTI and MISP that are quite popular. These platforms can be deployed on Amazon EC2, or you can deploy them in container technology, or both. I deployed one recently using OpenCTI, and I ran it in Docker on EC2 on AWS. Step two, once you've deployed your threat intelligence platform, you need to integrate it into your trust community. So this is something that Jackie has talked about a lot this afternoon, and it's really, really important to identify that upfront. Once you're receiving your threat intelligence feed from your trust community, whether that's ACSC or a different community or both, you need to use your cyber threat intelligence platform to process that cyber threat intelligence to decide what is going to be most useful for you to action within your security environment. Now, the more that you can automate here, the better. Although when you're still getting started, there might need to be some human in the loop just while you're figuring out what's going to be most useful for your organization. You can then deploy this cyber threat intelligence to both detective and preventative security services within your architecture. And we commonly refer to these as intrusion detection and intrusion prevention services. And I'll walk through this in a moment in how you do that with AWS native services. You can also generate your own CTI and feed that back out into your trust communities. Now let's step through in a little bit more detail how to action threat intelligence in your environment. So your threat intelligence platform will receive feeds from the ACSC and your trust community. Say for example, the ACSC publishes a known bad IP or a known bad domain. Say that this is something really scary and it's associated with a nation state actor. We want to be able to automate the response action here. So we're going to use serverless workflow orchestration like AWS Lambda and AWS Step Functions to action both our detective and our preventative controls. We want to prevent any access or activity by this bad IP or by this bad domain so that we can just ensure that all of this is taken care of automatically. So when it comes to preventative controls, updating your firewalls is a really great place to start. AWS Network Firewall enables you to define firewall rules that provide fine-grained control over your network traffic. Now, there's two key things that we can configure here when it comes to filtering your internet access. For example, we can do inbound and outbound layer three access by configuring block lists of IP addresses or ranges. 
we can also filter outbound layer 7 traffic by configuring domain names to block. Route 53 Resolver DNS Firewall is also something that we can use for preventative controls. We can configure domain name block lists. And what this means is that any attempt from within your environment to resolve that bad IP or that bad domain name will be blocked. When it comes to detective measures, one of the key things that we can use is Amazon Guard Duty. Now, Amazon Guard Duty is a threat detection service that continuously monitors your AWS accounts and your workloads for malicious activity. And it delivers detailed security findings for your visibility and for your response. What we can do is we can configure Guard Duty with the custom threat intelligence from your threat intelligence platform, and it can scan that, whether it's IP addresses or IP ranges, and it can also scan your logs. And we'll talk about that a little bit more shortly. Guard Duty also detects anomalies and malicious behavior, so it can detect zero days as well. Once you receive your new CTI, you can also check any of your historical logs for any evidence of a pre-existing intrusion, and you can create findings in Security Hub, which is AWS's cloud posture maturity service. You can also configure your networking appliances, such as your network firewall, to produce VPC flow logs, which is IP traffic going in and out of your network interfaces within your cloud environment, and Route 53 Resolver Domain Name System firewall query logs, and we can store them centrally in an S3 bucket. This is common practice for where we store some of our security logs. From there, we can query those logs with Amazon Athena, which is a serverless query service for indicators such as this known bad IP. And if we find them, it's reported as a finding into AWS Security Hub. Once those findings are aggregated in AWS Security Hub, we can then decide whether or not we want to share them back into that trust community via the threat platform. So as you can see in this diagram here, our services like Guard Duty, Network Firewall, and Route 53 Resolver DNS Firewall will report the alerts, convert them into findings, and then aggregate them centrally. Now, these findings are aggregated in a standardized data format. So this means that they can be interpreted by both AWS and partner solutions. Obviously, for the purpose of this talk, we're talking about AWS native, but just think you can swap that out for whatever your favorite partner service or platform is. So your threat intelligence platform will invoke an AWS Lambda function, and this is designed to operate as an internal dynamic CTI feed. This Lambda function gets findings from Security Hub, and it converts them into STIX format. Jackie mentioned STIX a little bit before, and that's our structured threat information expression. And that's the open source standard for cyber threat intelligence sharing. AWS Lambda then returns this STIX document to your threat intelligence platform as a CTI feed. So your threat intelligence platform then publishes this out into your trust community ecosystem. And we can schedule this, or you might decide that it's something that you want an analyst to press a button on, and that's OK too. So this bi-directional sharing allows you and your organization and your trust community to build up a comprehensive threat picture within that trusted peer-to-peer -peer network. All right, so that's all the technical stuff covered. What I'm going to do now is just recap the four key steps for getting started with cyber threat intelligence sharing. So step one pick a threat intelligence platform and deploy it in your cloud environment. The ACSC have deployed theirs on AWS. And as I mentioned before, there's a range of great open, solution, open source solutions out there. So check out AWS Marketplace. Once we've got that up and running, we want to enjoy the ACSC CTES feed and connect into that community. You'll get enriched CTI feeds, and you should become part of the ACSC partnership program and join the CETAS ecosystem that is making Australia more cyber resilient. Step three is to integrate into your trust community. So have a think about your organization, have a think about your sector, and have a think about whether or not you have any gaps in your current cyber situational awareness. As Jackie mentioned before, cybersecurity is a team sport, and these sharing communities typically organize around common business interests, industrial sector, or even just commonalities in the threats. 
a lot of these trust communities, as Jackie mentioned before, have global reach. So this gives you access to that broader ecosystem as well. Step four, do good things with your cyber threat intelligence. It's great to have a threat intelligence platform up and running, but if you're not doing anything with it, what's the point? So this step is about ensuring that you are connecting up all of your security products, even your security operations center, so that you've got your preventative and your detective controls working for real-time response action. You wanna remove undifferentiated heavy lifting so that your precious cyber analysts are doing things that only humans should be doing. All right, so as we know, and as we just mentioned, technology makes innovation possible, but it's the people who will build a better tomorrow. So check out Skill Builder if you wanna learn a little bit more about AWS. We have over 600 free digital courses, hands-on labs, and role-based games. All right, thank you so much for joining us today, everyone. Hopefully you learned something new. We're here to help, so please reach out if there's anything that we can assist you with as you start on your CTI sharing journey. And please don't forget to give this session a rating in your app for our CSAT scores before you head out into the chaos. Thank you so much. And thanks again to Jackie.